Northeastern. Let's get right into the problem area, which is Hurricane Matthew. This storm is going to be with us for a very long time here, so get used to it. This is special hurricane coverage on Hurricane Matthew. Taking a look at Matthew, it's going to continue to arc towards the southwest here. I do have it on a very large map here because the storm system has a very large cone of uncertainties after days five and six here, and you'll see why. As the system traverses across the Caribbean Sea here, it will start to move around the base of this ridge that's building across the western Atlantic here. And once it does so, it will be able to encounter an environment with high sea surface temperatures and very little, if no, wind shear. Once it rounds the bend, it will start to move up through a weakness in the subtropical ridge, most likely between the Haitian island here, the Hispaniola, and also Jamaica here, and move right up along somewhere in Cuba here. And then where it goes from there remains to be seen. It's a big question mark at this time. My most likely track takes it just east of the Florida coastline, but it takes it pretty dangerously close. And by this time, it will probably be a Category 4 hurricane, a major hurricane. This system has the potential to really blow up into a major hurricane here, Category 3 and then Category 4 likely. And then once it moves up just into the Bahamas here, not to say some of the models have trended a little bit further west as of late, but most of the models kind of zooming in on this pattern. Where does it go? Does it make landfall in the Carolinas? Does it head out to sea or does it go right up the east coast like many of the models are predicting? So I have this system moving just inland near North Carolina, that area, or just slightly offshore. And it could cause problems all the way up and down the east coast with heavy beach erosion, heavy surf. So this system is going to be with us, as you can see, well deep into late next week. And being that this is so far out, I have the cone going way out here, you're going to want to stay tuned to this storm because this is not only going to be a major storm, but it's also going to cause major problems wherever it makes landfall. Even if it doesn't make landfall, if it comes just close to land or just offshore, there's going to be tremendous amounts of beach erosion. But nevertheless, this system is going to affect land in some way or another. And I want you to stay tuned to this because this system could really blow up. This is a very large circulation, unusually large. And we will watch it as it traverses up the potentially once it gets on the other side of Cuba here. Once it once it starts to make that bend, we'll, we'll have better idea as to where it goes. I mean, there's some that take it possibly the Gulf of Mexico, but the key word here for the East Coast is potential. So let's get right into the satellite, taking a look at it. You can see that very large circulation here in the Caribbean Sea. And nevertheless, that is our big blockbuster storm to talk about in this segment of Weather Northeastern. I'm going to show you what we're going to be dealing with here, weather pattern-wise, that could set us up for this potential East Coast problem. Take a look at the problem areas. Uh, starting off with the precipitation totals here, we have that trough out west here. Back east, of course, we got ridging, but we got a cutoff low. This cutoff low could really play into Hurricane Matthew here, and I'll explain why. Take a look at the pattern here. You see this pattern kicking in here, this cutoff low across the northeast. This is going to be with us well into next week. The jet stream is way up here, so there really isn't anything to really bring it, you know, zooming out to sea here. What could happen is Matthew could eventually end up moving up here and meandering for days. And as this system moves up the east coast very slowly, it could eventually make landfall. If it does, it will stall for a very long time and be drawn into this cutoff flow where there's nothing going anywhere. So that's a potential, and that's a potential I'm looking at here at Media Marks Weather Northeastern. Let's get right into the problem areas, starting off with your drought map. Look at this. We do need the rain here in upstate New York, the Finger Lakes, Upper Susquehanna River Valley, even southeast New England here. This is a problem. So we could get some beneficial rains from Matthew here. But the problem is, will they be too much if this thing decides to recurve inland? Remains to be seen at this time. It's very potential at this point because it's so far out. But I just want to make it certain to you that 
Right now, there are many solutions on the table, and this could be one of them. Let's get right into the fall foliage across the northeast. Really changing rapidly across the northeast. You can see Catskills, Poconos, Adirondacks, even the White Mountains, Berkshires here, all changing very fast. So if you want to get out fall foliage, get out there and enjoy it while you can, especially if Matthew's going to come up the coast and cause problems. Getting right into your forecast, starting off with your TGI here. Take a look at this beautiful, well, can't really say beautiful. Maybe if you're across southern Ontario and Quebec here, we can see some fall foliage without too much heavy rain, but we do have some showers in the vicinity here. This, this is this cutoff low I was talking about that could draw Matthew into it. Take a look at the showers across the northeast. You see temperatures being held down in the upper 50s, low 60s into your Saturday. Unfortunately, that low center is right near New York City, so it's pinwheeling showers around it, and we could see showers likely from Binghamton, Albany, Harrisburg, Pittsburgh, all the way to Boston into your Sunday. Look at this kind of stalling out across the area. We have general scattered showers, but we will have some breaks of sun from Binghamton on westward to Buffalo and London and Cleveland here. Temperatures may be getting up by 70 in the lower Great Lakes here into your Monday when you're back to work. That's when it slowly starts to kick out. We still have some residual drizzle or showers in certain areas, but that low, even though it's weakening, sticks around and it could be a big player into Hurricane Matthew. In 10 seconds, I'll have a five-day outlook for my hometown viewers in Binghamton, Scranton, Upper Susquehanna region of upstate New York and northeast Pennsylvania. Don't forget to like me on Facebook at MidiMark, subscribe to me on YouTube at MidiMark.com, at Twitter at WX Northeastern, Google Plus at MidiMark, WeatherNortheastern.com and MidiMark.com. Look at this, TGIF through the weekend and the next week. Rain showers likely Friday into Saturday, unfortunately. Sunday, we start to get some clearing here into your Monday. Unfortunately, we get into more sunny skies come the weekend here. So. If you're looking for weekend plans, you might be able to get out there between the raindrops. Temperatures being held down into the upper 50s and lower 60s. That's going to do it for this edition of Weather Northeastern. <music>